first of all, I think most, most of people want to know what timing. Why now? Why now? Yeah. Why now? Very simple. The opposition coalition is under threat. Both from news that comes from within and some of the conflicts from within, but more importantly from the threats from without. But you have you have been thinking about it before, or was it a you know sudden decision that you decided, okay, I want to join PKR? It was very quick. So very what, quick. Uh, how quick? I mean, within weeks or within it was very fast. Sir. It was very fast. It was a quick decision. It was almost as though I was meant to to, to do that. Mm. You know, you know how it works out in life. Mm. You may think about it, but you put it into the back of your mind. You know, uh, but uh, I have been uh, labor laboring in my heart as to what I should do for the nation for some time because uh, I love this country. I I've been in politics since May 13th, 1969 up to now. There was the racial rights of 1969 was the catalyst for me to be involved in the national national uh, discourse and to be involved uh, fully in politics. And uh, I really have not stopped since then. Mm. So in my heart, I see that this country that I have is so, such a beautiful country, mm. such, it's so rich. This country really has got wealth that many, many countries cannot even come near to. Natural resources is fantastic in this country. Then I see what is happening. Why is it that there are still uh, large segments of the, of the Indian community whom I visit and whom I, I, I have some interaction with? Why do they remain so poor? Why are there Malays? you know, that are still poor. Why they are the, some of the poorest states are the Malay states, the heartland of the, of the Malay race. Why is it that the natives of Sarawak and Sabah, I see them in poverty, you know? Why is this happening in this country? Isn't God creating this country with so much wealth that the people can flourish and the people can prosper together and live with one nation? So these are the thoughts that have been going, going in my head. So you've been thinking about it when, since when? Uh, I've been thinking about it even when I was in MCA. Okay. Remember 2005 and 2008 when I stood for the MCA presidential elections. Yeah, I had time to think about it. And what would be the, uh, when, when is the catalyst? When, you know? <laughs> I don't think that we can say that there will be any uh, catalyst. Uh, is a... Uh, as a combination of events that's been shaping this nation mm. and with the background we see why is it the country is so wealthy Mahathe mm. says about the the huge revenue to government from petroleum where is the money you know mm. why is there so much poverty in Sabah and Sar uh, Sarawak why is it in Kelantan Tunggalu <laughs> that Perlis Kada it doesn't make it Something doesn't gel there, no? That's right. There's something that's missing there. There's some missing element. So when did Anwar actually talk to you? Only recently. How recently? Oh, oh I would say... Uh, approaches have been made to me, right. yeah, but by, not by Anwar, but by others. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was offered a parliamentary seat in the last general election. I said, So that no. was even, even before the general election? Yes, of course. Right. Even before the general election. Mm -hmm. Even after the 2004. Uh, two of, uh, the last general election was 2004. Two four. Yeah, that's right. The, the one before there were approaches made to me, okay. but I, I'm saying sorry. Mm. I have an agenda within the Barisan National. I want to reform MCA first and foremost, and hopefully through the, through the, uh, through the long history of this party within the Barisan National, that there will be some respect for the views of the party under a new president. And I was hoping to be that person of a reformed MCA, that is truly exerting its own stand on policy matters that would influence our partners in, our, in the Barisan National, especially Amnon. Um. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, where did you uh, decide to cross over when after the general election, the, the last March 8 general election, when, you know, uh, when the MCA is, uh, after the MCA lost so many? Well, the, the, the thing is this I lost the national level. But I won the hard, hard fight at the divisional level. 
I can't just leave my people, you know, and abandon them and, right. and then go, off, go over to one of the opposition parties, whichever it may be. I can't just abandon them. I like to have a good start and a good ending. You've been uh, good friends with uh, Uncle Kit and all that, and uh, now the fact that you're a crossover it doesn't look very good on uh, Tiket in many ways, because you know he's already facing uh, internal problems, uh, especially this uh, you know fight with uh, Swilek like coming up. Doesn't look very Is good it on coming him. Coming up. <laughs> well, you know, maybe uh, the storm brewing in the yeah, horizon. Right. Isn't it? Mm. No, I made sure that uh, I made my message very clear. Um, you know. On both occasions, I, when I took on the presidency, 19, uh, 2005 and 2008, I came out, despite the fact that I had no official, no governmental position, actually no party position, except my division chairmanship, 36% and the last one 40%. I have some standing within the party, and people recognize that I have some standing within the party. Mine was a stand for reform very clear. No play, play, play kind of reforms, you know, real reforms that the, comp that the party has to undertake and that the Barisan National has to undertake. I won't settle for but less. But you don't think uh, TK is able to bring about so reforms? When, no, no. So, when, the, when he came, to when he, I mean, he realizes, and of course I know I have a, a, quite a heap of support within the party. So when I saw him being threatened, I said, this is my friend. This is the guy who stood by me and I be by him during the AAB team fight. So I said, uh, I must do something to show that I support him. I invited him to my division, you know. That's right. The vanquish <laughs> inviting uh, the, the person who defeated him to his division and then saying we are still friends. When we fought the, the presidential election, we fought on principles. Uh, no matter who wins, as long as you do that, not on petty squabbles, we remain our friendship. Our friendship remains. So I say he's still my friend, and therefore, therefore I will stand by him. I think he's a man. Of, he's a man that does what he says and, and say what he does. Very straightforward man. I like that kind of people. So what uh, the people within your division, or former division? Are there any movements in terms of they also joining you to uh, quote unquote effect to uh, mm. I don't know about that, but uh, what I've done for them is I have uh, signed an agreement with my deputy who actually fought against me in the right. divisional election. And I signed with him an agreement. That I pass it on to him on, one, on very clear conditions. One of them is status quo remains. Which means to say, he will appoint my secretary as his secretary, uh, organizing secretary as his secretary, treasurer, so on and so forth, right. which he did. Mm -hmm. So it was a very uh, amicable uh, separation from the division. My people were taken care of, you know, and his and my opponent's people were happy that now their their leader is uh, number one in the division. But people will <laughs> say that uh, you are unable to bring your own people across. That doesn't really matter. <laughs> does it matter? No, I mean, you know, uh, for some people it does matter. You know, for political observers. Well. Only time will tell, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who will follow me? I do have calls from various parts of the country and they say, yes, we want to come with you. But uh, I say, at your time, mm -hmm. I'm, not f I'm, I'm not going to pressure you to do it t tomorrow. <laughs> Tonight they are. But that's not my doing. It was an earlier thing, I think, maybe. I don't know who was involved in bringing them over. There's a big group, several hundred of MCA members uh, in uh, Sungai Pusar, in Selangor, that is coming over to Kaidila. Okay? And I'm, go I'm going together with Anwar to that function. But you see what is happening in this country, all the events of the past. More and more, and more people are saying, no, hey, the two-party system is under threat. Count, count me in. One way or another, count me in.